have seen a great light. Almighty God, <coughs> to you all hearts are broken, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and perfectly guide you by your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Son, Jesus Christ, grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in a band of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, 
and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So our Christmas tree is not doing well. It um, has about 12 more hours it has to make it, and then I think that we can uh, put it out with the Christmas boxes when they're empty. Uh, we got an enormous tree. It's not really shaped so much like a tree as much as a lollipop, but... Uh, uh, as we got it into the house, all of a sudden, uh, all the needles were falling off. And actually, every time you open the door, it's kind of a relaxing sound of needles falling <laughs> through all the branches. Uh, at first, we thought we were going to have to get a megaphone to tell what we had gotten to the people on the other side of the tree. And now we'll be able to see right through it. Uh, but as the tree loses its needles, it looks more and more like an enormous version of another famous tree. You know which Christmas special I'm probably referring to, Charlie Brown Christmas. Now, do you remember that story? Do you remember the, the gist of the Charlie Brown Christmas? Uh, Charlie Brown is just not feeling in the spirit this Christmas. Linus chides him for not being in the spirit, but Lucy has a pretty good suggestion. She said it might be helpful if you directed the neighborhood nativity play. She then expresses her own Christmas frustrations that all she ever gets is toys when what she really wants is real estate. <laughs> then as he wanders back, he comes across Sally, who's making her copious wish list for Santa, finally suggesting that she'd really just be satisfied with plenty of 10s and 20s. And at rehearsal, Charlie Brown is discouraged as the nativity is being modernized with dance routines, new snappier music, and even new characters, a Christmas queen. Charlie Brown then notices that there's no ornamentation, there's very few decorations, or even a Christmas tree. And he thought maybe that would add some spirit to the play, to his life. And so he goes with Linus and Lucy to go get a tree. And immediately he connects with this small, spindly little tree that looks a lot like he probably feels in general and maybe even about himself. Linus and Lucy discourage him from picking this particular tree that's all of about three and a half feet tall and has more brown than green. But he's confident that once decorated, this tree will be perfect. Maybe if he can redeem and fill this tree with Christmas splendor and beauty, he can fill that emptiness that he's feeling. I do realize that I may be over-dramatizing or psychoanalyzing a Christmas cartoon, but please indulge me. And when he takes the tree back to the set and he decorates it, he's laughed at and criticized unmercilessly. As it feels like Christmas, where that Christmas joy he so much wants to experience is slipping away. And he yells out in frustration, does anyone know what Christmas is really about? We all know what happens next. 
Linus says, I know. And he walks center stage with his blankie in tow. And he begins to read from that second chapter of Luke that we just heard. And upon hearing that story, that glimpse of heaven dipping down, of God born in the messiness of a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, with barn animals watching attentively, and exuberant shepherds charging in. The Peanuts gang's hearts soften a bit, and they begin to fill with that seemingly elusive Christmas spirit. Then they begin to offer Charlie and his tree some encouragement. And they start to take decorations from Snoopy's over-decorated doghouse, and pretty soon the tree that mirrored Charlie Brown's doldrums, but also his hope, his hope for something with the power to transform his Christmas, now stands taller and fuller, reflecting that Christmas joy he's been seeking. Then they all break into hark the herald angels sing, as the snow begins to fall, and we know that in some small way, on that stage, heaven has opened in that moment. Sometimes as we try to get ourselves into the spirit of the season, we struggle. We struggle with what isn't light and joy in the world some 2,000 years later. We lose sight of what happened in that first Christmas. God came and dwelt among us. It wasn't regal in the conventional sense. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. And it was full of resounding joy. And that infant child did not fix everything, but none of the broken is ever apart from God ever again, ever. In 1968, 51 years ago was one of the hardest years in modern history, especially in this country. Thousands had died amidst the deadliest year of the Vietnam War. And the war had divided our nation, and it wasn't the only thing dividing our nation. In April of that year, Martin Luther King had been assassinated. In June, Robert Kennedy had been shot and killed. Our country, our world seemed broken. Now, it's worth noting at this moment that the very first Christmas took place not only in a stable far from home, but while a nation still felt the scars of their past defeats of exile. As the religious leadership was splintered, a fighting against one another. And Luke reminds us with the decree from Emperor Augustus that they were heavily under Rome's thumb. So back to 1968. As the year was coming to an end and people decorated their trees and went about their Christmas preparation, three American astronauts were preparing for the first manned orbit of the moon. And on Christmas Eve, after they rounded the moon and faced the earth from behind the moon, the views of the earth were stunning. Images never seen. That Christmas Eve, an unprecedented number tuned into the broadcast from outer space. Astronaut William Anders began, For all the people on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message we would like to send you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and he saw that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Jim Lovell picks up. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And then Frank Borman picks up. 
And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. The foreman then added, and from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck. A Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. In those words and images, it was as if God was looking down to earth from heaven, assuring humanity. He's got the whole world in his hands. Don't worry. He's got the whole world in his hands. It was a heaven-meets-earth moment that people desperately needed. But Christmas, Christmas, Christmas isn't just our assurance that God has the whole world in his hands, that we are not forgotten, that God is still at the helm. It's that God was willing to put himself into our hands, to enter fully into our lives. Those moments... Like on that stage, as Linus reminded his friends what Christmas was all about. Those moments from an aircraft thousands of miles away. And like hopefully a moment that maybe came and went this Christmas Eve. Where we feel at least a flitter of heaven sweeping down. We're reminded that heaven and earth have met. They've met in that Christ child. Those are not fleeting moments of reality. Those are fleeting glimpses of a reality that has existed ever since that moment. That God came down. Those moments aren't fleeting. They're glimpses into our ultimate reality, our ultimate truth. That God is indeed with us. Emmanuel has come. Amen. Stand with me and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God. True God, begotten, not made, of one being the Father. Through him all things were made. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He ascended into heaven, and the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord of Christ, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. We have to go to the Father. We believe in one holy and happy and our Father's church. We have acknowledged one happy. Prayers of the people. God, in this holy night, your Son, our Savior, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the end. 
Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Glory to God. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hands all who are in pain or distress. Glory to God. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Glory to God. In this holy night, the angels sang, Peace to God, his people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Glory, Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, strangers found the Holy Family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, heaven has come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Glory, Glory to God in the highest. In this holy night, angels and shepherds worship at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer, fellowship with Mary and Joseph and saints. Through him who is your word made flesh, our Savior Jesus Christ. Peace of Christ be always with you. Just a few very brief announcements. First, uh, if you want to be filled with Christmas cheer, uh, just witness the number of people who have rolled up their sleeves and lent a hand to uh, helping with this Christmas celebration, all of our Christmas celebrations. I'm uh, pretty confident over 100 people have done something from setting the table to decorating to singing uh, to welcoming to uh, any of the countless acolyting and all of the ministries uh, that go into uh, to, to this service and all the Christmas services. So uh, it's with a great deal of gratitude that I thank the staff um, and all of the, the lay leaders and all of the people of St. James. It really is inspiring. Uh, also, know that this is the Lord's table. This is not St. James' table or the Episcopal Church's table. This is the Lord's table. And you are welcome at the Lord's table. Uh, when you come forward, if you would prefer a blessing, just come forward with your arms crossed. Uh, if you have your arms extended, we will uh, give you a, a communion. Uh, and if you need a gluten-free wafer, please make that known as well. And then one last announcement is uh, that this service and all of our Christmas services and holiday services, uh, all of the uh, offering goes outside these doors. We use them uh, to do the work that we're called uh, by God to do, to go and uh, uh, provide ramps or a uh, dry house for someone in need or food. Um, or any of the basic needs, uh, whether locally, uh, domestically, or uh, abroad, uh, that money goes straight to do uh, that kind of light shining uh, that we are called to do. So please give generously. Give very generously. Uh, and have a very, very Merry Christmas. And we're glad you're here to celebrate with us. Um, with that walk in love of Christ. Loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice.
your only Son to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect by man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the days. Hallelujah.
stand as you're able. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. May we who share Christ's body live in his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give life to the world. Amen. invite us to be silent for just a moment, <clears throat> maybe to look around and see that we are surrounded by the light of Christ. May the Father who loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose ever-shadowing Mary, become became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.